The boxcar children think it's fun to give their houseboat a new name every single day. They name it after Grandfather, Henry, Jesse, and then they skip over Violet in favor of naming it after the dog. Why do they hate Violet so much? Argofomp Book Review, Argofomp Book Review. It's hot today, so the Aldens go for a ride in their station wagon. They drive by a river, and they see a houseboat available for rent. They immediately snatch up this amazing deal, because it's not a house, it's not a boat, it's both! But then, two men in a black car almost run them over. What foul villainy is this? They must be the culprits. The boxcar children buy food at a grocery store, and the houseboat vacation begins. They watch birds for a while, when Jesse accidentally drops a can of salt in the river. They're forced to stop at the first town and visit a grocery store. Henry buys clothesline here so he can build a makeshift chair in the river. Violet uses the chair to do laundry, and it's basically her only contribution to this book. Like I said, I think they kind of hate her. They stop at a restaurant where a waitress slips an envelope to the two culprits. The one culprit tells the other culprit, Hey, don't worry, we've been getting away with this for years without being caught. I have no idea how they've been getting away with their crimes for so long when they incriminate themselves in public like that. The next day, the boxcar children go fishing, and they stop to visit another grocery store. This is three food trips in three days. Why can't they buy more than a day's worth of food at a time? They see a woman buy a stamp at the post office. The kids decide it is super suspicious for somebody to only buy one stamp. So they follow the woman to her candy store, and they kind of harass her until she admits she's worried about her son. He's been working with the culprits. Oh, no! They attend an auction. The woman's son buys a box of clothes with money that can't possibly be his. He runs away as soon as he can, and chaos erupts when a valuable vase is stolen from the auction hall. The Aldens return to their houseboat, only to discover the culprits broke in and stole their clock. For reasons that never get explained. Their next stop is the April Center. This is a park with a doll display, an animal display, and of course, there's a general store. The boxcar children can't survive without a place to buy food, after all. We get told the April Center is world famous! People come from all over the country to see it. Most people stay a week, but you have to stay at least two days to see everything. Really? It's a park with three buildings. That does not take two days. My kids would be bored with this place in under an hour. The boxcar children meet Sam and Jeff, who are twin brothers with twin horses. The horses are not being fed enough. Benny is sly like a fox, so he carefully questions Sam until Sam reveals what's going on. Heads up, this is stupid. The culprits came to Sam and said, Hey, Sam, your brother's in trouble. Give us half your money or we'll tell the police. Sam immediately handed over the money without asking any questions at all. You'd think he would want proof, or he would ask what sort of trouble his brother is in, or he would talk to his brother about this at some point in time, but no! He says nothing and gives up half his paycheck every single month. This is the worst blackmailing scheme I've ever heard of. Jeff is also being blackmailed with empty threats that are easily disproven, which is why the two of them can't afford to feed their horses. Then he says, don't worry guys, I'm gonna help you. Henry takes pictures of some random birds while the culprits hide behind trees. That's the scene on the cover. It's mainly an excuse so they can have a picture of the culprits to show the police later on. Henry accidentally drops fish heads in the sandbox. They refill the sandbox, only to find the stolen vase inside. Ah, it's all clear now! The culprit smuggled the vase out of the auction hall by hiding it in the box of old clothes. They paid the young boy to buy the clothes. That way, if he got caught, he would take all the blame. Then, they smuggled the vase out of town by hiding it in the sand in the houseboat. Ever since then, the culprits have been waiting for an opportunity to sneak back on board the houseboat and recover the stolen vase. But, uh, the boxcar children left the houseboat unguarded when they spent two days at April Center. Why didn't the culprits sneak on board then? Eh, whatever. The boxcar children set a trap for the culprits by telling everyone, we're going to the movies tonight, the houseboat's gonna be totally empty. The culprits hear this information, they sneak on the houseboat when it's empty, and the police catch them red-handed. The end. Post-book follow-up. 
It took me about two pages to get tired of the houseboat. I'm sorry, but the houseboat segments are boring. There's nothing for our heroes to do on the houseboat besides look at birds and go fishing. The author must have realized the houseboat angle was a dead end because the boxcar children spend the majority of the book going ashore and visiting towns. The mystery aspect of this book was good. The culprits committed multiple crimes, and we spend a decent amount of time focusing on them. Yes, pretending to blackmail people was a stupid crime, but the plot to rob the auction was thought out and had multiple angles. That's more than other mysteries in this series. I was pleasantly surprised by it. As usual, this book puts Jesse in charge of the cooking. I feel so bad for Jesse. They have a private chef at home, but whenever they go on vacation, Jesse is forced to be their personal chef. She probably relaxes more when she's not on vacation. Overall, the mystery is better than usual, but the houseboat setting is a failure. The mini adventures were not good in this book. They were mostly visits to the grocery store and the boring April Center. I like the candy store trip, but that was about it. I give Boxcar Children number 12, Houseboat Mystery, a 7 out of 10.